welcome to the seventh series of Have I Got News For You, a program now so popular that unauthorised spin-off products are springing up everywhere, as this advert in the Funeral Director magazine demonstrates. <laughs> in the news while we've been away, there's a shock for Kenneth Clark when he's invited onto the Today programme on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Just when he thought the Whitewater scandal was dying down, President Clinton is arrested at a particularly embarrassing moment. <laughs> <laughs> and in a Westminster pub, the Prime Minister is introduced to Gillian Tailforth's grandmother. <laughs> with Ian Hislop this week, a man who left Channel 4 because he said he was fed up with the rancour there. The remark Michael Grade sadly misheard by all accounts. <laughs> Jonathan Ross. And on Paul Merton's team, a comedian who's always avoided performing on television because he wanted to make sure his material was only seen by a small handful of people. I should have just gone on Saturday Zoo. Eddie is there. <laughs> so let's march Serb-like into round one to uh, nuggets of news film per team. All they have to do is decipher the contents. Uh, Ian and Jonathan, straight in with the topical stuff for you. That's the UN forces, special assignment. <laughs> There's Vera Lynn. Probably is. Oh, there's Vera Lynn. No, that's <laughs> Barbara Streisand singing uh, to a sellout crowd. So that would be D-Day, of course, the celebration of which John Major thought would be a good idea to, like, erect a bouncy castle in Hyde Park or something. <laughs> Major proved that he couldn't actually organise a party in Hyde Park without it blowing up in his face. The words, um, piss up and brewery spring to mind, don't they? <laughs> or country and run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the government denies it's trivialising D-Day. They plan a dignified procession to the cenotaph, a minute's silence, and then a bugle fanfare as Her Majesty, dressed in black, steps forward to launch the spam fritter competition. <laughs> In defence of the plans, John Major said it would be a very moving moment when thousands of Mr Blobbies waded into the Normandy beaches. <laughs> According to Lord Healy, you celebrate a victory, and that came on VE Day. I don't think you celebrate a landing. He's clearly never flown on Aeroflot. <laughs> uh, Paul and Eddie, what's this uh, tale of woe? Can I you? just say that I now know where the tub of lard went. <laughs> starting early, aren't you? <laughs> um, Paul and Eddie, a tale of woe for you. Um, oh, the Invisible Man's had a relapse. <laughs> <laughs> That's him now, he's better now. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's David Meller. <laughs> yes, um... Yeah, it was, um, um, this is, I know the story. Um, okay, excellent. A man with an immense moustache who um, was unfortunately, well, he was too old apparently, according to things for bad, um... <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. He's too, apparently it's just like Sky News. <laughs> He's over 65, so he's, um, he's not allowed to have physiotherapy, and he's got chronic arthritis, and uh, he's just supposed to have a large moustache. He's an immense moustache. He's a brilliant moustache. <laughs> I think it's called Mr. Moustache, and yeah. it's a brilliant moustache. <laughs> and he should get, you know, his, his psychotherapy, because he feels great after it. I saw it. He's, he feels great, he says. Yeah. But he, he's not allowed it, you know, because about younger people are supposed to get it, so that, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the case of two pensioners, 78-year-old Fred Stedman and 73-year-old Johnny Gray, who were turned away by the NHS, allegedly for being too old. Uh, especially harsh, as they've been on the waiting list since they were 37. <laughs> uh, in uh, in defence of age limits, Sue Marshall of the Brighton Healthcare Trust said there has to be some cut-off point. Yes, it always used to be death. <laughs> The government claimed that the opposition had distorted the truth, and John Major declared that the Labour Party are alarming people. Well, I suppose Margaret Beckett's hairstyle is slightly alarming. <laughs> but, uh, Not uh, compared to some. <laughs> <laughs> You're in very dangerous ground when we start talking about hair. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't help it. It's a disability with him. You're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I have the option. Yes, OK. Thank you, girls. Um, <laughs> That's all right, miss. <laughs> Says yeah. TV's Mr. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Ian and Jonathan, uh, rather more of a success story for you. 
Right. Now that's a batsman hitting the ball, so it's obviously not English. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a man he, called Brian Lara. And he hit the ball very, very hard and he got a lot of points and... <laughs> points! <Something>. Brian! <laughs> this man just people. clocked up the highest test score in history and you call it a lot of points. It was... <laughs> He it broke was, Gary Sober's 40-year record, and it's a load it, of points. It was, it no was, wonder you're on Channel 4, that's it. Uh, when he reached 366, Brian Lara surpassed Gary Sober's world record. When he reached 292, he surpassed Viv Richards' best score. And when he reached 47, he surpassed the entire England team's score in the third test. So Lara is now eligible for a £50,000 prize offered by a British insurance firm. So after two years of letters and phone calls, he'll be told that he's not eligible for anything because an independent assessor estimated his score at three. <laughs> Born ready? Something fishy for you? Um, fish. Fish, yeah. Sea. Smoke. Smoke. Big fat. Smoke. Uh, my this bar. is worse than cricket ball. Oh, this is, this is the uh, mutant fish because there's been reports of fish going, uh, started hiring sports equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that uh, one. Yeah, you're too busy watching the cricket ball, please. <laughs> Poison, <laughs> dying, death. Poison, uh, dying, death. Fish. And big heart <laughs> problems. Yeah. Uh, fish, death, smoke, and uh, fuzz on water. Yeah. Good. CNN. <laughs> Like fish, death, smoke and fuzz and water it's, it's, is not it's, verbatim what I have in front of me. Well, that's what, so. the one I read in the yeah, paper. Oh, right. um, it's radioactive waste is turning is, uh, fish and mutating into different things, like basketballs and, <laughs> and, and five litre bottles of orange juice. Yes, yes. There's one, there's a clip there. It's deformed like. fish in the North Sea. Yes, I think got. that's... That's what you were saying. saying. Really, uh, I didn't hear that. Paul. I heard froth, fish, sea, death. <laughs> oh, you complain so much. I know. He yeah. <laughs> has a loser's mentality. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a Greenpeace report uh, that the North Sea is now so polluted with various forms of waste that fish are developing deformities and ulcers. Uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food denies there's a problem. We have found no evidence that fish are becoming more abnormal, said a large mackerel in a tweed suit. <laughs> Uh, which total cods wallop brings us wriggling to the key side of round one and uh, the predictably uh, depressing scoreline is that both teams are as even as Stevens can get Ian and Jonathan and Paul and Eddie sharing a small but perfectly deformed four <laughs> and so as cucumber between cheeks we now carefully insert our caption competition between <laughs> rounds one and two uh, Ian and Jonathan uh, this is yours to savour. Paul and Eddie, consider this. <laughs> In the meantime, let's quickly uh, dispense with the rest of the programme, turning, as we traditionally do at this stage, to the second round, and the dubious world of tabloid headlines. <laughs> now he looks like Melvin Bragg. <laughs> Paul, uh, something for you to reflect on. Uh, thief takes a shine to his victim's cars. Um, yes, it's very self-explanatory, really. <laughs> It's this bloke um, who has the name of Colin Sad, <laughs> who's been stealing cars. Uh, he's, he's got a sort of passion for cars, and he steals them, and he sort of does them up, and he polishes them, and sort of waxes them, and sort of pumps up the pressure in the tyres, and then returns them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just been sent to prison for six months for doing the very same thing. <laughs> His name's Colin Sad. Yes. <laughs> I heard the name and the story, and uh, unfortunately it's completely true, yes, mm. for two times. Uh, don't applaud, please. Um, absolutely right, Melvin. It is the uh, tragic story of the Sheffield man who uh, stole people's cars, washed them, polished them, and then brought them back again. Uh, the thief's name is Colin Saad, as Paul mentioned. Frankly, if you're called Mr. and Mrs. Saad, there's not a lot you can do for your son, but calling him Colin is hardly the answer. <laughs> uh, Eddie, not so much a headline as a novel for you. Our love has the scent of a new mown grass and lilies. Not many people are lucky enough to have known love like this. Yes, yeah, so obviously, uh, it's a love affair. Someone, gardener's question, time gone mad. Um, <laughs> it's uh, something, about, I think, yes. something to do with uh, love letters that were discovered. That someone wrote, so, so, um, um, Margaret, Princess Margaret, uh, King Margaret, someone. Um, <laughs> 
Alex Douglas Hume's nephew, his brother's dog's friend. <laughs> Keith, who knew him well. And they've been writing, years ago, had a thing and wrote letters with great poetry in. Mm. And uh, <laughs> in, uh, this is a bit of it. And mm. Margaret uh, also reportedly had an affair with Peter Sellers, who said that she was more adventurous in bed than Britt Eklund. Although she did draw the line when he said, I hear you've got a sister, why not bring her along? <laughs> Jonathan, yours comes from that austere organ of political correctness, The Guardian. Tax break for Busty Dancer after US judge sizes up her assets. I saw the story, it's a very fine story indeed. There's a, a topless exotic dancer in the States who's had her uh, breasts enhanced, shall we say? Large bags of plastic inserted for the entertainment of sad American gentlemen. And uh, she then tried to claim it back on her tax form. Um, and uh, I think she got away with it, but the judge branded her as freakish. He said it was a tad unkind. Her name was Chesty Love. No, I think it was, wasn't it L.A. Bust? <laughs> L.A. Bust. Or was it Melissa Mounds? Uh, I'm getting all confused. I think you're, uh, you're reading out your own address book, aren't you? Um, was it, um... <laughs> I'm, afraid, uh, I'm afraid Paul was completely right. It was actually Chesty Love. But he doesn't get a point. He doesn't steal my point, does he? He's sitting over there with his foppish head and take my point away. <laughs> I had to study it in the kind of sad, lonely, loser's way and remember the names, does he? I mean, I got the story right, Angus. I mean, it's just by reading it out. Lay down the parameter. I oh, know, I knew the story. The breasts were enhanced. She got away with it and just didn't happen to slip the name in before old Big Mouth over there <laughs> blurted it out. And you're going to give him my point now. And you think that's fair, do you, Mr. Smarmy Git? <laughs> it's, all, it's all about the judge uh, who gave a stripper £2,000 worth of relief. Makes right. a change from the other way around. <laughs> Exotic dancer Chesty Love uh, for one point four. Yeah, like the uh, name matters. Like the name actually counts like for name anything matters. in this game. <laughs> Jonathan's yeah, exactly. very overexcited. He hasn't been on a real channel before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ian, a heartwarming story of tolerance and understanding for you. Thug's free trip to see movie. Oh, um, this is a special outing by. I guess a sort of social security outfit somewhere um, who've taken a series of um, young offenders to see showings of reservoir dogs <laughs> as therapy <laughs> and the idea is that these young thugs go in and see this film about people killing policemen and come out thinking yeah I won't do that <laughs> but um, reservoir dogs which I'm sorry I haven't seen I, I bet mean, you have is yes. it a very moral film because this is the claim it's a very moral film it's a uh, very uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's friends uh, to okay. find moral and... Uh, and film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Defenders will also be shown Mississippi burning to cure them of racist feelings and the latest Michael Winner to cure them of ever wanting to go to the cinema again. <laughs> uh, all of which celluloid capers bring us uh, charging to the end of the second round and a half-time score is that, uh, well, Ian and Jonathan are forging behind with eight whilst Paul and Eddie are trailing ahead with nine. <laughs> Uh, God knows what round it is now, because uh, he knows everything, but uh, for those <laughs> of you not quite as bright, uh, I can reveal that it's time for our widely reviled or one out round. Uh, four trusty, reliable individuals, which one's the Serb spokesman? Four. Uh, four leaders in their field for you. David Ashby, MP. Noddy. Sister Wendy and Ernie Wise. Yeah, I'm glad that David Ashby um, has appeared. I, I, he was the man who, um, earlier in the year, much to my amusement, was quoted in the paper as saying that uh, he goes on holiday with other men and shares hotel rooms with them to save money. <laughs> and he's not homosexual at all, he just does it to save money, which I think is a marvellous excuse. You know, bend over the sink, will save us all another 15 quid sort of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Noddy's in bed with big ears there. Ernie Wise used to go to bed with Eric Morecambe on their wonderful television series. And I don't suppose Sister Wendy, um... <laughs> unless she gets drunk, um... <laughs> I would say she was the odd one out. Is, uh, sadly, the right answer. It is that all of them have shared a bed with another man, except Sister Wendy. Uh, MP David Ashby denied uh, that there was uh, anything abnormal about his sex life and said that the incident had brought him closer to his wife. He said, I'm hoping to take her away for a few days, whips permitting. <laughs> Case proven, I think. Uh, Noddy was uh, always jumping into bed with big ears. I think Camilla Parker Bowles knows the feeling. Uh, uh, Eddie. 
a fruity foursome for you, an orange, a banana, a raisin, and a durian. That's a, a hedgehog. <laughs> hedgehog fruit, known as in local, where they, where they get durians, apparently. <laughs> Which is where? Ah, uh, Kent, I don't know. Um, <laughs> of people, named... Uh, Names of people, uh, you got uh, Orange, William Orange, mm. William Orange, uh, True. Banana, Reverend Kane and Banana, who yeah. uh, was a banana. Um, <laughs> just raisins the old one out, because jury, it's uh, MP Julian Critchley, MP. Um, <laughs> and so, Jeff, you know, I don't know what raisins. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they all are fruit. <laughs> Except the hedgehog, which moves. Yeah. Well, that's all we've time for on Open University. Um, <laughs> I had an idea. I thought I'd really? celebrate that. <laughs> Good. He said you can't peel a raisin, but you can peel all the others. I didn't actually say yeah. it like that. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's my joke. My joke. Hello. Hello. Mm. I couldn't possibly oh, comment. Camera, sir. Um, <laughs> well, I haven't yeah. been on telly. I'm not on telly now. I refuse to go. Uh, but <laughs> the, 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 the raisins something and the hedgehog yeah. that's not no the the raisin one. something and the hedgehog you wouldn't put the hedgehog in if it wasn't it's um, the raisin's the bad one i'll it's give you i'll give you two points for the raisin something and the hedgehog that's not um, <laughs> uh, they're you all names this is being rigged a bit <laughs> two points there are names uh, they're all Got names the other of political bit. leaders yeah and this is what you yeah, effectively what you said except for the durian yeah the durian is a large spiky fruit which is prized in Southeast Asia as an aphrodisiac. Timothy Raisin was Home Office Minister and brought in uh, Timothy Raisin, that's his name. You're making this up. No? He was... You are making this up. There's no Tim Raisin. Yeah. Timothy, I think, unless you know him very well. Freddie Saltana. <laughs> Timothy Raisin was Home Office Minister and brought in controls restricting the selling of sex aids, resulting in a huge boom in the sale of durians. Uh, the Reverend Kanan Banana, the former president of Zimbabwe, got so upset with people making jokes about his name that he passed a law banning them. And at one point even contemplated suicide by slicing himself into pieces and jumping into a bowl of hot custard. Uh, Jonathan, four major cultural icons for you. Elvis Presley, the Crankies, Ming the Merciless, Emperor of Mongo, and former UN Secretary General Perez de Cuellar. Um. Um, Paul might know the answer to this. I think I do, actually. Right, keep it to yourself, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> They've all played Vegas, apart from Ming the Merciless. Uh, oh, and Perez de Quayla. Do you know he, was, he went under his pseudonym of Tim Raisin. <laughs> there was a story that Perez de Quayla had, had been ab abducted by aliens. That's right. And, um... <laughs> Abducted by aliens. You can't just and the others and uh, there's, a, there's a sort of group in America that think that he was kidnapped by aliens and sort of like examined and then brought back. So I imagine that they. I mean, they, there's some people who think that Elvis Presley lives on Saturn. Um, there's some people who think that Cranky should be sent to Mars. So <laughs> I imagine the odd one out is the Emperor Ming, because all the other ones have been connected with. I mean, they probably sort of think, oh, we saw a UFO or we once went to another planet or we were abducted by aliens. And the only one who hasn't claimed that is. Uh, the Ming there, played by the actor Charles Middleton. <laughs> you know what? You know what? <laughs> you know what? If you're not telling the jokes, you're crashing bloody bored. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's stuck in a lift with you. You run out of um, the and it's like, do you remember who played Ming the Merciless in the 1925 <laughs> Universal RKO serial? Is this a man, is this a man who hosted a programme called Fantastic <laughs> Facts? <laughs> Fantastic fact being, how on earth did this programme ever get made? <laughs> yes, it does grieve me as much as it grieves you, uh, Jonathan, but I'm going to have to give Paul two points, because he's absolutely right. Not uh, letting it worry you that you're seven points behind. Uh, four people that you wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley. Uh, Mrs Thatcher. She's an alien. Leon Trotsky, John Major, mm -hmm. and Barbara Cartman. Well, Trotsky and Merton go to the same barber. <laughs> I think this is a, an ism question. Mrs. Thatcher had Thatcherism named after her, and Trotsky had Trotskyism named after him, and John Major had 
uselessism. <laughs> is it after yeah, Totsy got an axe through the head? He looked like Barbara Carton down the bottom. <laughs> it is, uh, yes, it's, 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 um, so it's two points to us, then. Uh, we'll no, quickly you, on. Have you, have you chosen anybody yet? You, you've chosen uh, Major, didn't you? Yes, John Major. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Okay. It's, uh, is it Barbara Cartland? No, uh, I couldn't resist Leon that. It is, in, it is in fact right. Um, oh, it's, it's, I uh, thought it was him. Is it, is it all of them have devised, right. <laughs> devised a political philosophy except John Major. Uh, in fact, Barbara Cartland claims that uh, she gave him the idea for the government's Back to Basics campaign. Yeah, that was a good one. Fits in. Uh, Leon Trotsky has uh, Trotskyism named after him and was eventually found dead with an ice pick in his head. Uh, John Major doesn't have a political philosophy named after him, although that's no reason not to put an ice pick through his head. <laughs> Uh, nevertheless, while Trotsky produced uh, several important tracts expounding his theory that international workers should seize control of the means of production, John Major, in his defence, has produced the Traffic Cone Charter. <laughs> Which smart thinking heralds the end of this third round, and a quick glance in the downward direction, as Gillian Telfalls would say, uh, reveals that uh, Ian and Jonathan are looking like a spent force with ten, whilst uh, Paul and Eddie are thrusting ahead with fifteen. Our final bout of uh, loin girding is reserved for round four, our terminal missing words round. If you've not seen the show before, this is where the panellists have to guess the blanks in the headlines. If you have seen the show before, it's uh, exactly the same. <laughs> our uh, guest publication this week, from which one or two headlines are taken, or maybe three, who knows, that's how exciting it is, <laughs> is, uh, is none other than the revered arthritis news. <laughs> uh, those with least lead off, so... Uh, Ian and Jonathan, that very much means you, I think. Mm. Uh, sober Scots, turn what? Turn bed covers down very neatly at night. <laughs> sober Scots, so turn to sure. alcohol. Sober Scots, turn down chance to rule themselves. Is it turn to opera? Paul? Suddenly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I seem to remember basic polite manners. <laughs> means that we should stop talking for at least more than a nanosecond before you jump in. Well, with well, your dull you but short talking, I'll be here till Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, Sober Scots turned down whatever Paul said. It is, uh... <laughs> it Sober is, Scots uh, turned down volume when boring Merton gives the correct answer. <laughs> It is, it is generally accepted form that once you've had 94 guesses, <laughs> the, uh, the other team can leap in. Uh, to opera is the right answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, next, major set to what for Bottomley? Dress more flamboyantly. <laughs> Reshuffle. Lose a things. few pounds and take up the banjo. <laughs> Enlarge breast. <laughs> <laughs> Close down Thank rest you. of hospitals. Maintain Bart. erection when talking. <laughs> Create new government post. Very probably, yes. <laughs> Very probably. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that actually is uh, the well, after all. <laughs> I don't know why you put a question mark at the end of your little <laughs> statement then. You know full well it's white and you're going to get a bloody point, aren't you? Yes, all right. All right, I, just, I just thought I'd put an air of mystery into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's not Major right, set to <laughs> reshuffle, he's going to move her. Move jobs. Major set to reshuffle, he's going to move her, move jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I'm CNN uh, now. I'll give you the answer. It's Dash Hope of Promotion, which you weren't going to get. Next, Northern <laughs> Ireland right. welcomes what? Um, careful psychopaths. <laughs> Tourists who don't read the newspapers or watch television. <laughs> Stupid Americans with a lot of money. Uh, is not New right. New arthritis clinic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a bad guess. Arthritis care is actually... Oh, the no. There comes a time for when even you have to admit that the fact that you browse through arthritis <laughs> weekly, just so you can win a what is nothing more than a dressed up parlour game, is deeply sad. <laughs> can I just point out that I know these as well? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, 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 we realise that. And lastly, what could be sticky for Charles? Camilla Parker Bowles, <laughs> if he plays his cards right. <laughs> I don't think you need to play I don't understand that. Is it re entry <laughs> would be sticky? <laughs> Talking about space. Large sellotape. Uh, sellotape was near the answer. TV tapes. Uh, Paul and point. Eddie, uh, your turn to be interrupted by Ian and Jonathan. Uh, Britain has more what than people? Socks. Mm. 
Toasters is in fact an inspired answer, completely right. Uh, next, and more rats. And don't forget, there's only ten points in it. Uh, next, <laughs> Princess Anne makes what? Sad commercial that Angus turned down. Is it a smell? <laughs> Princess Anne makes a smell. Yeah. No. Uh, makes advert. Very good. TV ads, yes. Makes Just eight points in TV ads. Um, and only two questions left. Sadly. Uh, next. No, loyal, we're roaring in now. Loyal archer to get what? Sacked. Our flight does say hopeful doctors. <laughs> next. Get oh, I've got Paul coming through on the ether. Possible posters minister for sport. Two points, Paul. Is it very good? <laughs> yes, sports minister job. And uh, finally, cabinet rivals what on major? Park cars. <laughs> cabinet rivals have party on major. Uh, no, none of these things. Is he praise on? It's heaping something, but not praise. Fish. Odium. Fish. <laughs> Permacetus. Um, Barbasite cricket. Chocolate. Heap fish on major is the nicest answer so far, but in fact pile pressure is what we were, uh, what we were after, which uh, I don't think we what were going to get heap, in a moment. What you say heap then, pile? Well, yeah. heap pressure I would have uh, accepted as an answer. Oh, heap right. pressure? There's no such fight. We were never going to sue It's easy if you're a Red Indian. What if you heard someone say heap pressure? Heap pressure. Yes. Uh, which uh, verbal equivalent to Blind Man's Buff brings us ruefully to the end of this evening's contretemps and the denouement is that this week's Spotty Herberts are Ian and Jonathan with 15 while this week's Valiant Victors are Paul and Eddie with 21. <laughs> so, a uh, night of passion with Chesty Love for our winners a okay. night of passion with Colin Sad for our losers. <laughs> Uh, but before we drive the final nail into the Merton and bury tonight's proceedings, there's uh, just time for a mercifully brief glance at our caption competition. Paul and Eddie, this was uh, your disturbing vision. Oh, yeah. Hello, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why I can buy some chutney? <laughs> Let's go and rob a bank. That'll muck up the identity kit pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ian and Jonathan, this was your risible image. I had that Barbara Carton in the back of my cab once. <laughs> not, not literally had her. No, I was saying. <laughs> Smithfield's Market, please, driver. <laughs> On which uh, surreal note, we say uh, thank you to our panellists, Ian Hisloff and Jonathan Ross, right. Paul Merton and Eddie Izzard. And I leave you with news that following the army clampdown on fraternisation between soldiers of the same sex, the Irish guards hit upon an ingenious solution. <laughs> Sport, and there's further humiliation in the West Indies when Mike Atherton is clean bowled and loses his way back to the pavilion. <laughs> and finally, claims that extra hot curry was used to fire up the Grand National winner are confirmed by the jockey who came second. <laughs> Good night.